help, but you're able to recall the word given time. I do this all the time. I may do it today when I'm talking. I'll talk, and my mouth seems to go faster than my brain, and I'll stop for a second because I forget what I want to say, and if people are nice in the audience, they usually shout out the word, and I feel much better. Um, but you can, you can recall the word within a short period of time. Um, you might misplace an item, but you have the ability to problem solve possible locations of an item. So you forget where you put your keys. So what, what's the first thing you do? Where was I last when I had my keys in my hand? And nine times out of ten, you can find your keys. You might have occasional memory issues, but not significant enough to affect daily living. For example, you might forget the name of a person that's seen only occasionally, but you don't forget the name of the people that you work with every day, or the people that you live with, or your family members. With mild cognitive impairment, it's a little bit different. So you have new problems finding words when speaking or writing, and you just can't retrieve the memory of that word. People just can't remember it. Um, you forget things more often, appointments, events. This is where people start to forget their way home, uh, start to forget their way around a familiar place. Um, and then people are starting to notice this. Trouble with conversations, books, or movies. Um, difficulty making decisions. Decision making is a big problem with most types of dementia. Um, they just can't make a decision. And with all those issues, they withdraw from social activities. Withdrawing from social activities makes the situation worse. The more you withdraw, the more isolated you become, the worse the symptoms usually get for most people. There can be mood and personality changes, and now friends and family are noticing something's wrong with mom or dad. Something's different because they fear that the kids are going to think that they can't take care of themselves or put them in a nursing home or take them out of their home and there's all sorts of issues. We see this with seniors even when they fall. They don't want to tell anybody because they're afraid um, and, and it's justified because kids jump to a conclusion sometimes and all, all of a sudden want to take over. Um, but when these symptoms start to appear, it's really essential um, that they get a medical diagnosis because it could very well be a treatable condition and not a type of dementia. Um, if the symptoms are caused by dementia, then you can diagnose it early, get them access to treatment, um, and hopefully um, some medication. But some of the conditions that look similar to dementia, vitamin and hormone deficiencies can mimic certain types of dementia. Depression can mimic certain types of dementia. Medication effects, particularly if you were fine, and then all of a sudden you go on a new medication and two days down the road, you're totally bonkers and you can't remember where you are, what your name is, how to get home. Um, that's something that's significant that could be related to that medicine. Infections. And the one particular infection that we see this a lot with, with women is when women over the age of like 70 um, get urinary tract infections. Um, urine, women are more prone to urinary tract infections than men because our urethra is shorter, so the, uh, the bacteria can get up there and we get much more urinary tract infections, particularly as you get older. Um, what happens is usually when you get a urinary tract infection, you get symptoms of burning on urination, frequent urination, maybe low back pain. Um, women, as they get older, don't get these symptoms. Um, often get no symptoms, Some, sometimes might just get leg pain, and it's not even, doesn't seem related to the kidneys, but oftentimes they get a urinary tract infection and the only symptom is confusion. And, and they're automatically diagnosed with, oh, something's wrong, you know, um, when all they need is an antibiotic to treat the urinary tract infection and they get better within 48 hours of treatment. So doctors are much better with this, but for years women were, you know, admitted to the hospital and started on psych meds because they had um, UTIs and, and the caretakers would say make that thousand dollar check out in my name and I'm going to pay the bill for it. Um, so there's a lot of scamming going on with people with dementia. They don't know how to balance their checkbook. Um, they don't know the meaning of numbers so they get scammed very easily. Um, they walk out of the bank with five thousand dollars cash in their hand out to the parking lot. I've seen it. Um, so um, these, this abstract thinking, these numbers, money issues, paying bills, becomes a huge issue. And these are, or this is usually early in dementia. Um, poor or decreased judgment. So you might find someone with dementia making choices that put their safety at risk. They can't evaluate the relative risk of a situation. Um, and they might have difficult, difficulty differentiating, uh, differentiating what's important and what's unimportant. They find themselves in situations that they're not 
prepared for because of poor judgment. So this is the little old lady walking down the street in the middle of winter in a nightgown and slippers and thinks she's dressed appropriately. Um, their, their judgment is off. They can't make the right judgment. Um, they may misjudge their own ability to complete a task, so they might go to do something, not be able to do it, think they can do it, and actually put their safety at risk for it. Um, they have problems misplacing things. We talked about that. Usually, you know, you can retrieve your, you think about where was I last when I had my keys, and you can retrieve your keys. They can't do that with dementia, and oftentimes they put places, put things in odd places. Um, they, you might find that they lost their cell phone, and you find it in the refrigerator. Um, I know a woman whose husband had early onset Alzheimer's and he had this fixation on socks and she would find his socks everywhere. Suspicious, they can become withdrawn. Um, while it's more commonly happens in the later stages, um, some people come, become inappropriate, hurtful, um, vulgar, use profanity when they never did before, become physically combative usually in the later stages, but it can happen in some people in the early stages. Um, and lacking modesty, you know, people that were very modest before, you know, walk around naked, um, and you would never think that that person would do that, and it's because their judgment is on. And then a loss of initiative, um, you know, they might, the person with dementia might not be um, interested in things that they used to love before. They used to love, you know, playing cards, but now they have no interest in playing cards, um, so they don't want to do it. Um, and they might require prompting for most activities because they just have no interest in these activities. It's very important for the person to stay social as well as the caregiver to stay social um, because those are very important factors. People around are very important. And if you ask anybody that's had any family or friend um, diagnosed with um, any type of dementia, they'll say that the first thing that happens is everybody stops calling. And people stop for a number of reasons. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to help. They get, they get scared that they're gonna say the wrong thing and make the situation worse. Some people just don't wanna be involved. They don't want the responsibility if it's a family member, so they just don't. Um, and, and that isolation makes the whole situation worse for the patient and for the caregiver. 